I'm in it. Is it 8 o'clock? It's 8 o'clock. Okay, 8 o'clock. Yeah. It's 8.01, technically. We made it. Uh, what's up, everybody? I am Justin Nault. Uh, if you're here, you probably know me by now. This is week 11. This is live Ask Me Anything number 11. Um, today is all about fitness. We're going to be talking about fitness non, 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 stop. Literally all about fitness. This is kind of like the child and nutrition one I did. This is a topic that I could literally do 10 Ask Me Anythings on. I could do literally 10 hours of this. It might go over an hour. I'm going to try to cram it down into less than an hour. And there's a reason that we're doing an Ask Me Anything on fitness, and that is through the Clovis Academy, through all the social media platforms. Everything that I see, you guys know that I attack people real hard on Instagram, like people like Weight Watchers. We've been talking about them a lot this week. So I kind of hammer people that are giving really poor nutrition advice because I think it's important to do so. Um, I thought the nutrition space was giving the worst advice possible until the last five years of really, really exploring the fitness space. It's equally as bad. Fitness, nutrition, there's so much nonsense out there, it's not even funny. So we're gonna talk about a lot of that today. Um, something I wanna touch on real quick before we get started is sharing. Josh is not here this week, the wizard. He stayed home. I'm just kidding, he's partying really bad people like Russell Brunson and Tony Robbins. He's, I, couldn't, I couldn't compete. He just, he left me for the week. It's sad. So I got dad here. What's up dad? Hey. You can hear him. He's hanging out. He doesn't know. You can settle in. You can have a seat. Don't worry. You can, you can get comfortable. Okay. You got an hour, dude. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, so go on the Facebook page. I'm at facebook.com slash the Clovis culture. Uh, if you're on Facebook, you're already watching it. Instagram, you're seeing us live now as well. Running live simultaneously. So if you're on the Clovis Culture page, do me a huge favor, click the share button. I'm gonna do that right now. So you just click share, and then you click share now public, and that's gonna send it directly to your timeline so your friends and stuff can see that, which is really cool. They can comment on your page, and that's really fun. So okay, I just shared it to my personal Justin Nault page. Instagram's good, checking my notes here. Live, ask me anything, number 11. Fitness. So I decided to call this fitness for fat loss or not because exercise has nothing to do with fat loss. I know, I know, I know. You probably didn't expect to hear that within the first three minutes of this Ask Me Anything. But we're going to jump right in and it's true. I want you to keep something in mind. I'm sure some of you are CrossFitters. I know some of you personally are endurance athletes. You compete. I know some of you get paid for sports, okay? A lot of this is really not going to be geared towards you. I'm going to give some specifics at the very end that I think athletes can use to improve their training. And when I say think, I mean I know because I work with them. Um, so we'll talk about athletes a little bit at the end. But what I want you to remember is 90% of the people who have found their way to me, probably more than 90%, are coming to me for fat loss. So this is really going to be an ask me anything about fitness and fat loss. And honestly, it's a moot point. The two don't go hand in hand. It's, it's, it's not a requirement for fat loss. As most of you know, you can get results without it. And I've proven that time and time and time again. I made over 130 custom nutrition plans in the last two weeks. Over 130 of you have gotten a custom nutrition and movement slash exercise protocol designed by me in the last two weeks. So I know what you guys are looking for. I, I see the same things over and over and over. So first things first, I'm gonna give you a quick summary of the ep episode, how this is gonna go down. Again, this is geared towards the 90% that are trying to lose fat. So CrossFitters, don't skewer me just yet because I'm not giving you advice on how to improve your snatch, okay? <laughs> so summary of the episode, I wanna talk about how everyone judges themselves on their activity level over and over and over and over and over. It's always on how much they exercise, how much they exercise. It's all anybody wants to talk to me about. I need to lose weight because I haven't been working out. That has nothing to do with it. So we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about calories in, calories out. The myth that just won't die, right? Eat less, exercise more. Eat less, exercise more. We hear it over and over and over and over as the obesity epidemic gets worse and worse and worse. We're gonna talk about that. It's the fastest way to failure. Why you're getting such bad advice? Why is it that you have to find the musician from Nashville to get some answers to your questions and actually get results when everyone that you've paid for results is standing around doing this? Duh, tried my best. Mm. We're gonna talk about that, okay? I'm gonna talk about one of my favorite quotes that has to do with that. We're gonna talk about how following athletes and celebrities is a really, really bad idea for your overall fitness and your journey and your mental well-being. It's really not a good thing. 
I'm gonna talk about my all-time favorite protocols, the favorite protocols that I've used time and time again to get results in myself, to get results in other people. Um, I'm gonna show you the best tool I've found to optimize all training, the single best tool that I've found that I still use every single day. Uh, we're gonna talk about steady state cardio, why steady state cardio as we know it, I know I ruffled a lot of feathers on Instagram with that treadmill picture, but as we know it, steady state cardio is stupid. I'm gonna explain why, okay? We're gonna talk about beach body. We're gonna talk about CrossFit. We're gonna talk about how to get jacked. If you wanna get jacked, that's actually more in the Q&A towards the end. Um, we're gonna give you some specific tips, like I said, for competitive athletes. Um, and we're gonna talk about live Q&A. So we actually have, what I did was I took some Q and A's from the Facebook group, from the Clovis Academy, which is a free academy that we're running. We got over 255 members now. It's just crazy, guys. If you're in the academy, I promise I'm trying to keep up. I promise. I try to like every single comment. I try to look at everything you're doing. I try to answer the emails from your family members that are coming in. Some people have gotten grumpy with me for taking too long to respond, which is weird because I do this all for free. But you know, some people still get grumpy. <laughs> I'm trying. I promise. I'm getting like 30 to 6, 30 to 60 email inbox uh, messages per day. I'm getting hit up on the academy. I'm doing everything I can. I promise. I promise. I'm gonna get to everybody. Um, I've gotten questions on Instagram as well, and I have some great, great, great Q and A questions. They're awesome. We're gonna touch on them. All right. So let's jump right in. How everyone judges themselves on exercise, right? So like I said, I've done 130 custom nutrition slash fitness plans in the last two weeks. And I've noticed this trend that's kind of funny. And literally every single email starts the same way. They come to me via email, justin at cloviscultureco You can do it right now if you want to. If you want to just open a new tab and go, hey Justin, I want help too. I'll do it for you. It might take me a couple days. But everyone starts it like this in the last three weeks, literally 100% of people. It starts with, this is my name, this is my age, this is where I'm from this is how much I work out. Or it's, I have a nine to five job now and I work, or I work graveyard shift and I used to work out all the time. It's like they're trying to validate this, this decision to not work out anymore. They're just like, I used to work out all the time and I promise I will again. Maybe I'm just making excuses. Hey, how can you give me motivation to work out more? I don't wanna give you motivation to work out more. I don't give a shit if you work out. I'm trying to get you healthy, right? Most of you are coming to me with a significant amount of weight to lose. You're not in a position where you should be working out. But everybody tries to justify this thing. Like, hey, I'm gonna work out more, or if they do work out, they insist on telling me exactly how much they work out, how many days a week they work out, what the type of workout is, and how much they love it, right? If they wear it like a badge of honor. Everyone is judging themselves based on the amount that they exercise. That's crazy. You don't need to do that, right? Because here's the issue, and this is just cold hard truth, this is tough love right now. Every single person that comes to me that is proud of how much they work out is at least 30 pounds overweight. 130 of you. Because I get your numbers, I get your age, height, and weight. And you tell me you're doing CrossFit five times a week and you're 255 pounds? You're actually hurting yourself, you're damaging your body, you're stunting your fat loss. You're literally preventing your fat loss, but you've been lied to. You've been lied to about calories in, calories out. Eat less, train more. Eat less, train more. Over and over and over and over. I have a video about this on, on YouTube. Some people, I've had some people come to me pretty emotional about it because I talk about specific people whose trainers and doctors have actually told them they're lying. Where they're like, listen, I exercise five days a week and I'm eating a thousand calories a day and I can't lose weight, why can't I lose fat? And people think they're lying. They tell them that they're lying. It's ridiculous, it's, it's just this, Everything that they've learned is based on nothing. There's no science to back this up. There's no science for, for calories in, calories out. Now, I'm not gonna go in depth on calories in, calories out because I already did Ask Me Anything number eight. Ask Me Anything number eight was called Stop With The Calories Already. That was the name of Ask Me Anything number eight. I did almost an hour about calories in, calories out and how it's a myth. So go watch Ask Me Anything. You can go to clovis.store slash AMA. Clovis.store slash AMA. You can see all the AMAs and all the show notes. Watch Ask Me Anything number eight, calories in, calories out. So I'm not gonna get into the calories out, calories in, calories out science, which doesn't exist. Again, spoiler alert. Um, but I am gonna borrow from Rob Wolf here. Uh, Rob Wolf has become a buddy of mine over the years. He's absolutely awesome. He's never steered me wrong with recommendations. I've given you guys some of his recommendations. He has a best selling book called Wired to Eat. I highly recommend you pick up Wired to Eat and read it because he explains how we are genetically wired to move less and eat more. Listen to that again. 
like all animals in the animal kingdom, we are genetically wired, that means coded in our DNA, in our survival instincts, to eat more, move less, to consume the most amount of calories possible while expending the least amount of energy. And what are we taught for health and wellness? Eat less, move more. It literally goes against your genetic coding. It goes against every single fiber of, the, of, of human cells. Every single part of you is screaming, no, 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 no. We don't want to do that. That goes against our survival instinct. That's why this is so hard. That's why this eat less, exercise more is the number one reason for the fitness diet and fitness and nutrition roller coaster. This thing that you do, I, Justin, I've tried every fad diet, I've tried every workout, I've tried beach body, I've tried bar class, I've tried yoga, I've gone swimming, I ran a marathon last year, and I'm still 30 pounds overweight. The roller coaster, why? Consistently, eat less, move more. Eat less, move more. Eat less, move more. It's insane. It's quite literally the definition of insanity. If you keep trying this over and over and over again and expecting a different result. That's crazy people stuff. Crazy people stuff. So we're focusing on the, the genetically gifted or the, the few that this works for. You're looking at The Rock's Instagram page every day, right? It doesn't work for you. It doesn't work for anyone and it doesn't work long term. So I'm all about setting up lifestyle design, changing your lifestyle in a way that's sustainable, that you can carry with you long term forever. What do I tell everyone? In the Clovis Academy on social media all the time, if I do my job correctly, you won't need me in two months. Remember that as we get further into this AMA, because not everybody thinks like that. Not everybody has your best interest at heart, okay? Not everybody is not fueled by profit. It's a big deal when it comes to your health. You need to take care of yourself. So why do you keep getting bad advice? Why do we keep getting this stuff over and over and over, fed the same lines by the same people? I tried this gym, and he said the same thing that the other guy said, and then I went to this nutritionist, and she said what my doctor said, and then my doctor told me this, and it's all some food pyramid, move more bullshit, and it never works. So now I'm 15 years into my fitness journey, and I'm obese, and I can't figure out what to do about it, and now I'm frustrated, and I'm considering putting hormone injections in my body to lose weight or gastric bypass surgery or something like that. It's crazy, don't do it, all right? I'm gonna tell you why you keep getting bad advice. Now to do that, I'm gonna take you to one of my favorite quotes of all time. It's a lengthy quote and I'm gonna read it to you. But my favorite part about it is an excerpt from this quote. This quote. The excerpt is, specialization is for insects. Remember that, specialization is for insects. We're not insects, we're human beings. We're not ants. They just carry food blindly to the queen and we would die for her and we walk in a straight line like all the other ants. We're not lemmings, right? Specialization is for insects. Let me explain to you what I mean, what I mean by that. I'm gonna read this quote. It has nothing to do with fitness and nutrition, but the overall message is there and it's sound. A human being should be able to change a diaper, plan an invasion, butcher a hog, con a ship, design a building, write a sonnet, balance accounts, build a wall, Set a bone, comfort the dying, take orders, give orders, cooperate, act alone, solve equations, analyze a new problem, pitch manure, program a computer, cook a tasty meal, fight efficiently, die gallantly. Specialization is for insects. Robert A. Heinlein. That's one of my favorite quotes of all time. Why? Because I get obsessive with everything from Spanish to travel, to jujitsu, to boxing, to fitness, to nutrition, to music, and everything in between. I'm just one of these guys, I like to do everything. You are never gonna find me bored. If you're ever bored, you're doing life wrong, okay? You're never gonna find me bored in a million years, right? There's too many books to read for you to be bored. So, specialization is for insects. What I mean by this, and I'm sorry if this is horn tooting, I would never recommend anything to any one of you ever that I have not done myself, ever. Whether that's, you gotta get fat adapted. You need to try the keto diet and do prick your finger and do blood draws and go into deep ketosis. You need to try paleo. You need to try powerlifting when I used to deadlift 425 pounds, right? You need to try extensive CrossFit workouts. You need to try boxing. You need to try jujitsu. You need to try gymnastics. Whatever it may be, I've done it. There is nothing I will ever recommend to you from ice baths to deep breathing exercises to psychedelic retreats in the jungle. There's nothing that I'm gonna ever recommend to you that I have not done myself. I'm that guy, I live this shit every day. 
And you have to be willing to get outside your comfort zone and learn different things, right? I've read vegan books, I've read vegetarian books, I've read ketogenic books, and I'm still somehow the paleo guy. I fall somewhere in that realm because I know what works because I've tested these things out, right? You can't be dogmatic about it. So here's what happens with everybody else. Whether it's a personal trainer or a fitness class instructor or a CrossFit coach or a nutritionist or a doctor, right? Think about it this way. When the only tool you have is a hammer, suddenly everything starts to look like a nail. So think about it like that. If the only tool I have is a hammer and you come to me with a problem, I'm going to assume that your problem is a nail and I need to hit it. Because that's the only tool I have. I don't have a screwdriver, I don't have a wrench, I don't have this, I don't have a, a, a diverse array of tools for different things that come to me, but yet each individual is unique. They have unique problems. So you have these coaches, these fitness instructors, these nutritionists, these doctors that get these specialized certifications and degrees and then for some reason they decide that they're done. They're done learning. They get that education, right? So let me, to give you a, a, a real strong example of this, I'm gonna do a little role playing game, right? And this is what this looks like. So I'm, let's say I'm, I'm Bruno, right? I'm Bruno, I'm a personal trainer and I compete in bodybuilding competitions and people pay me because they think they're gonna somehow look like me, right? So then Mary comes along and Mary's five foot two and she's 100 pounds and she struggled with an eating disorder for the last six years. And I look at her and I go, you're skinny, you should do my bodybuilding muscle building program. Here you go, eat 400 grams of carbohydrates a day and lift weights six times a week, that will work for you. Crazy, right? Or now I'm Mary, the yoga instructor, and Joe comes up to me who's six foot three, 240 pounds, and has never exercised, and for some reason signed up for a marathon. He's gonna run his first marathon six weeks from now, and I'm Mary, the yoga instructor, and I go, Joe, you, you should come try my hot yoga class. That's gonna get you ready for your marathon. Good luck, right? Or my favorite, and I've seen this time and time again because of my time spent in the CrossFit world. I saw this over and over and over and over and over again. I'm Joe, the CrossFit trainer, and I meet a 350 pound, 60 year old woman. She walks into my gym and she comes up to me. And I realize she can't bend over to tie her shoes. And I say, here's a barbell. Don't worry, I'm gonna put you through a four week class that's gonna teach you how to be safe. This is insane. But the only tool they have is a hammer. That's the only thing that they know how to do, right? So what it becomes is you see, you find an expert and you trust them and they tell you do it my way and when their way doesn't work, they say you're not trying hard enough. I don't know what you're talking about, it worked for all these other people, right? You're unique, you're an individual, this is crazy. Stop trying to do what other people do. It's crazy. Like I said, I, I've made, this literally makes me like more angry than I can express to you that people do this to people, right? Because I've worked with now, like I said, over 130 plans that I've made in the last couple weeks. Maybe 10 of them were in a position where they were healthy enough to do something like CrossFit three days a week, let alone five to six days a week, which is what most people are doing, right? You'll get there. I'm not saying that you can't do these things. I'm saying that you're not healthy enough to do them now. I have to meet you where you are. And if you're not ready and you're punishing yourself and you're damaging your body, you're doing more harm than good and you're never gonna get to fat loss that way. I don't give a shit what motivational post your local CrossFit gym put on Instagram with a picture of a 70 year old woman flexing who's still 30 pounds overweight saying you're never too old to get started. It's crazy because it makes me wanna put my head through a wall when I'm on Instagram and I'm looking at cycling gyms and boot camp gyms and CrossFit gyms and they keep posting their insane before and after pictures, right? And they're all always the same. It's like, this is Gina. Gina joined our gym six months ago and she's lost 10 pounds. Yay, Gina. And I'm looking at this screen going, 10 pounds in six months? You lost 10 pounds in six months. Fire everyone that you are paying for advice. Right now, fire all of them. 10 pounds in six months? That's a six day goal in my world. Go to the Clovis Academy right now, facebook.com slash groups slash Clovis Academy. And yet there was a post today from a girl that said, I'm a weekend, 12 pounds down, zero fitness, zero, zero fitness, okay? If you, you wanna be a personal trainer and make money, keep people hungry and sore. So they constantly think they're doing something. People are paying for torture, it's ridiculous. So the same thing goes for celebrities and I talk about this with cheat days, people wanna to talk to me about cheat days, like 
The Rock does a cheat day. He eats three large pizzas every Sunday and he eats a thing of brownies, right? You can have that same cheat day when you are The Rock. When you're a 265 pound man of Samoan descent who is solid muscle, who has been working out six hours a day for countless years and is literally taking all the steroids, you can eat like The Rock. Then you can do that, okay? Until then, you don't get to do that. The same thing goes for athletic training. You guys are modeling your training after athletes. You're doing CrossFit and you're like, I'm gonna do the regionals, right? You're not competing. You don't compete. <laughs> Why are you doing this to yourself, right? You're modeling it after these celebrities or Instagram models or whatever and you're setting yourself up for failure because this is true of 99% of you. You're not an athlete. Why are you training like one? And I don't mean that like, like in a bad way. Like I'm a musician, I'm a professional musician. I get paid for it. If you play guitar for fun, congrats, you have a hobby, you're not a musician, right? If you're not playing gigs, you're not really a musician. You, you have a hobby that you do, right? For most of you that are doing something like CrossFit, CrossFit is a hobby. If it makes you feel good, that's great. But if it's making you feel good mentally because you have a big ego and you wanna be the tough guy and it's hurting your health, why would you keep doing that? There's no excuse for that. I wouldn't keep playing piano every day if piano was bad for my health. I'd just stop doing it, you know? I mean, that's, that's like, that for, to give you an example, I talked to a guy today who was, um, oh, so again, like I'm, I, I give you these random examples of people and then you'll never know who these people are, but there was a guy today who was over 300 pounds and went to Orange Theory Fitness. What does Orange Theory Fitness know how to do? Sell you their program. So they sold him his program and all the trainers kept saying, push harder, push harder, push harder. What happened? Multiple injuries, dude couldn't work out. You're done working out now, you weren't ready and you're injured, but what happened? Orange Theory Fitness trainers have a hammer. He was a nail. I wanna lose weight. They hit him with a hammer, literally. They busted him up to the point where he couldn't work, it, work, work out anymore. It's insane, right? You gotta think about this stuff. Think about it from a different perspective, please. Understand, it's the same thing with nutrition. If mainstream nutrition advice worked, there wouldn't be an obesity epidemic. If this fitness first approach to fat loss worked, there wouldn't be an obesity epidemic. If it was as simple as work out more, do you know how many overweight people work out every single day? And they feel like shit and they're embarrassed. They don't wanna be in the gym on the cardio machine. They don't wanna be there. They know people are looking at them, but they, they feel like they have to because people tell them they have to. We're abusing people, man. We are abusing people, straight up. And people are abusing themselves. It's damaging. It's damaging to your brain, right? It's crazy. So let's talk about steady state cardio. Um, again, this is another thing where there's another ask me anything I did. It's ask me anything number six, the one that I filmed from Mardi Gras. It was called potato tricks and party tips. And I talk about the cardio myth. So I'm not gonna really dive into all that. I, I just basically line up the evidence about how there is no evidence for the heart rate as we know it. 220 minus your age equals max heart rate. What's the fat burning zones? People always talk about these zones. There's no evidence for these zones. There's, there's no scientific data to back it up. It's from nonsense studies done in the 1960s that were just kind of curated. It's a bunch of nonsense, right? So know that when you're on a treadmill for 45 minutes, an hour, whatever, and you're huffing and puffing, and you're like, oh, I ran an eight minute mile today. It almost killed me, but I ran an eight minute mile. You're not burning any fat. I don't care what the machine tells you. You're in the fat burning zone or whatever. You're huffing, puffing, you're sweating like that. It's glycolytic, you're burning sugar. As long as you're burning sugar, you can't burn fat. Now, people make the argument with me too. They say, well, if I'm burning sugar, you say if I don't have sugar in my system, then I'll burn fat. So if, I'm burn, if I burn all the sugar, I'm gonna burn fat, right? No, it doesn't work that way because certain activities are glycolytic and certain activities are aerobic, right? So it's aerobic, means with oxygen, and anaerobic means without oxygen, right? Glycolytic exercise is anaerobic. You burn sugar no matter what. So if your body doesn't have it, it creates it. It creates it by stripping your muscle tissue. Literally, takes your lean muscle tissue, strips it through something called gluconeogenesis, and turns it into glucose, okay? So as long as you're eating carbohydrates, even if you're not eating carbohydrates, and you're just doing like, non-stop CrossFit or you're just running at a really, really high pace or whatever, you're not gonna burn fat. You're only gonna burn sugar. And if you don't have the sugar in your bloodstream, your body's gonna create it from your own lean muscle tissue. So this is crazy to me because what happens when people say, I'm gonna get in shape, what's the first thing everyone does? They just start running, <laughs> just randomly. It's like New Year's resolutions, everything. They're just like, I'm gonna get in shape. Tomorrow, I'm gonna run. 
and everybody hates it and they're super sore and they're counting the seconds, they're looking at the treadmill going, seriously, it's only been 10 minutes, somebody kill me, right? Like, everybody hates it, it's terrible. And that's what everyone does. Why? Why do you run to get in shape? If you were in the room right now and I said, why do you run to get in shape? I would want you to tell me why you run to get in shape. And you can't say, because running is good for you. Because there's no evidence to support that. And I know there's no evidence to support that because I've tried to find the evidence to support that, okay? So this is what I'm saying is, is you, you, we don't know why we're doing things. It's just bad advice on bad advice on bad advice on bad advice. I'm trying to help you lose weight, trying to get you healthy, right? If you're trying to run because you wanna be a better runner, cool. But if you're doing it to lose fat, nope. Unless you do it correctly. Which is why I say steady state cardio as we know it is stupid. So go back to that AMA, AMA number six, and we talk about the 180 rule. This is from Dr. Phil Maffetone. It does have science behind it. You can go to drphilmaffetone.com, look up his 180 rule, and you can, you can learn about this yourself. So 180 minus your age, I'm 31, that brings me to 149, which means my max for my aerobic threshold is 149 BPM, that's beats per minute. So I put a chest strap heart rate monitor on, monitor my heart rate while I'm jogging. Between 139 and 149 is my sweet spot, that little 10 beats per minute zone, right? I can carry a full conversation. If my dad and I go out and run, and I'm at my heart rate and he's at his heart rate, we can sit there and chat. You're breathing through your nose the whole time. You have a conversation. It's, it doesn't suck. It's kind of fun. You're outside, you get the sun. Now, in the beginning, you're probably only gonna be able to walk. And your ego is gonna go, oh my God, I can't believe how out of shape I am. This is crazy, right? But know that you're burning fat and know that you're increasing your aerobic threshold. For me, I started running like 13 minute miles with aerobic threshold training. This 180, I was running 13 minute miles. Now, keep in mind, I trained jujitsu, I'm an ex-boxer, like I said, I, I did powerlifting, I did CrossFit, I've done everything you can think of, right? I'm a pretty competitive dude. And I was just like, what, a 13 minute mile? And I'm spiking over 150 heart rate? This is crazy, like, I, my body is useless. What is this garbage I'm carrying around? Like, this is insane, right? And then before I know it, weeks and weeks later of daily training with this, all of a sudden I can run a nine minute mile at the same heart rate. That's truly in improving aerobic efficiency in my body's ability to burn fat. This is a way to accelerate fat adaptation. There's a great book about this called Primal Endurance by Mark Sisson. I'll put that in the show notes. Um, okay, so now that we've talked about the cardio myth, the other thing I wanna talk about is that literally everyone is overtraining. Everyone is overtraining. All these people that come to me that are currently involved in fitness, they're overtraining. It's five days a week, it's six days a week, it's I lift weights three days a week and then the other days I do cardio and then on Saturday I do yoga and I do this and it's, like I get the idea of moving every day and all that, but this, this like intense training every day is, is simply overtraining. It's, it's not good for your body. And I wanna talk about two things and I know I'm gonna get hate mail or whatever, don't kill me for this, right? <laughs> um, beach body and CrossFit. I get asked specifically about these. I got a lot of questions today about beach body and a lot of questions about CrossFit. Beach body, do you know what I love about beach body? Sean T. Shanti, he's an amazing dude. He's absolutely incredible. I did the Insanity program four times. I did his Insanity 30 day max or whatever he came out with. And uh, Abel James is a good buddy of mine. He's known as the fat burning chef. Abel sat down with Shanti. Shanti is so open-minded as a dude, it's amazing. There's a, a great little article that Abel put up called uh, Shanti puts butter in his coffee, right? That goes against every single nutrition rule that Beachbody has ever put out. I did P90X, I did P90X2, I did P90X3, I did P90X30 whatever it was, 30 day thing. I did Insanity, all these things back when I didn't know better. I was like eating Subway and working out six times a, day, six times a week and going, why am I not getting skinny either? Damn you, beach body, right? But the programs were, were, were you know, pretty cool, but they're overtraining. An hour and a half a day at P90X is absolutely overtraining. It's fun, it's motivational, it's all that, I get it. But what happens is you get stuck in this mindset of this calendar. Right, so now you have this beach body calendar that's staring at you every day, this new 80 day obsession thing. It's like an hour a day, right? You don't need to be doing that, and what happens if you miss a day? You feel guilty. I get stories from people who miss a day, they start over. I missed a day, I screwed up the whole thing. Oh God, well I'm just gonna quit the rest of this week and then I'll start day one again on Monday. It's this vicious cycle. They know what they're doing. They're manipulating you, okay? Think about that behavior. You're getting manipulated. And their nutrition plan is shit. And their products and supplements are shit. <laughs> Okay, it's this, it's this fitness first approach of like, we're gonna crush, 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 exercise more, exercise more, eat less, and take our $130 a month shake that tastes pretty terrible, 
and you're gonna get results. And then when you don't get results, what? You see the testimonies on their sales pages, on their website, you see their before and after videos, you see their testimonies, these are all the ingredients in our shake, and you feel bad about yourself. They are preying on you, that is predator behavior. It's predator behavior. This doesn't work for you? Nah, -uh. look at all these other people it worked for. They must have done it right and you must have done it wrong. Tough shit, dummy. That's what they're doing to you. It's, it's really crazy. And I was caught in this, I did this. Like I said, there's nothing I recommend that I haven't done. There's nothing that I shit on that I haven't done. Trust me, I've been on that treadmill for hours. I've eaten brown rice and tilapia six times a day. I've paid a shitload of money to personal trainers to try to cut my body fat and none of them ever worked for me ever and told me to try harder. I've been there, I was a fat kid. Didn't want to take my shirt off to go swimming. I was that guy. I've been there with you. All of this. The good, the bad, the ugly. I've been there with you, okay? So if it ever feels like I'm yelling at you, I'm yelling at the universe for what I've been through, okay? <laughs> Think about it that way. This stuff is just, this overtraining approach is completely unnecessary. And the other thing is, let me, all right, let me break into some science of what actually happens here because CrossFit is notorious for this too. You're training five days a week, six days a week. You're doing regionals and you're repeating regionals over and over to get a better score. You're doing this, that, the other thing, right? You're spiking your cortisol levels and your muscles never get a chance to recover. So this is why, and I get a lot of hell for this term, but I use the term pleasantly plump CrossFitters. There are a lot, a lot of pleasantly plump, plump CrossFitters because CrossFit has this weird thing where they like glorify bad nutrition, right? It's like donuts and deadlifts or carb front loading before a workout or carb back loading. Let's go eat pizza after because we, we deserve it or CrossFit events where they're hosted by caterers with cupcakes and there's some crazy shit going on in the CrossFit world in terms of nutrition. And it's just notoriously bad because it's a fitness first approach. It's the idea that you can burn off a bad diet. You cannot burn off a bad diet. We talked about glycolytic, we talked about anaerobic, we talked about aerobic. You can't burn off a bad diet. It's just not gonna happen. So the other thing to remember with beach body and CrossFit is the risk of injury. So with CrossFit, now let me be very clear. I know a lot of CrossFitters that I love. I know a lot of CrossFit gym owners who are fantastic. They're incredible coaches. They don't let somebody who's not ready, they don't put a barbell in their hands. They teach perfect programming. They don't do things like this. One of the most, one of the highest risks of injury is taking a complicated move, adding weight and adding speed, right? So we're gonna do overhead snatches for time. That's insane. Unless you're trying to get to the CrossFit Games and you're planning on competing for an average person to just be healthy, that's insane. So I know a lot of CrossFit owners and gyms who have actually banned this type of thing. They will not allow you to do really complicated what's called Olympic lifts for time, for speed, for reps, whatever. They just won't do it. It's, you know, you might do a couple of reps at a heavy weight and then you're resting three to five minutes. You know, they're, they're okay, we're trying to get your, your Olympic lift up. That's great, right? Awesome. So. The other thing with beach body is low weight, high reps is also the fastest way to failure where you're just fatiguing your muscle and women always do this because they're afraid they're gonna bulk up. Let me tell you something. You guys have been watching me for the last 22 days. What do I look like? I've been eating 3,500 calories a day, trying my absolute best to gain as much weight as possible. And I look pretty much the same. Have I gained some muscle? Yes, I have. But trust me girls, you're not gonna get bulky from lifting weights. This is a myth. Nutrition can get you bulky combined with lifting weights, but you're not, if you're doing high weight, low rep, which is what you should be doing for proper resistance training, not this low weight, high rep until your muscles are so sore, you're screaming, don't do that stuff anymore. It's actually really dangerous and you're not gonna bulk up from weightlifting. So I'm gonna show you the number one issue that I have with fitness combined with nutrition. This is the idea that carbohydrates are required for performance. Nothing could be further from the truth. And there's actually a great example of this because Rob Wolf just interviewed him. Uh, his name's Dr. Sean Baker. Uh, Dr. Sean Baker was also on the Joe Rogan podcast for three hours. Dr. Sean Baker is a carnivore. When I say he's a carnivore, I don't mean an omnivore like you and I where we eat vegetables and we eat meat. He is a 100% carnivore and has been for 15 months. He eats four pounds of meat a day zero carbohydrates, and he holds four world records in athletic performance. He's about to break another one in two weeks. He's going for another world record. The guy deadlifts 500 pounds for 10 reps. He's an absolute savage monster. Hasn't eaten a single carbohydrate in 15 months. 
and his performance only gets better. Now he has professional athletes all over the world that are repeating this carnivorous diet, getting better and better and better and better and better. The idea, I've been in CrossFit gyms and I've had people look me in the face and tell me if you don't eat carbohydrates, you'll die. Now, when they tell me that, they don't know my background, they don't know who I am, they're just having a conversation, and I don't, I don't poop on their parade. I just go, oh man, that's some interesting stuff, and then I walk away and then my head explodes and I die in the parking lot, right? They say carbohydrates are required for human survival. No, not at all. It's the only macronutrient that's not required for human survival. Fat and protein are required for human survival. Without them, you die. Without carbohydrates, you live a long, happy life. You don't need a single, single carbohydrate for human survival. You absolutely don't. Now, I'm not saying you need to ditch carbohydrates. I eat a ton of vegetables. I think that they're great, right? But I'm just saying this argument is nonsense. So let's talk about the number one tool that I've used. And I actually forgot about this until right now because I had it in the, the show summary. So I'm just going to have to spit all this one off the top of my head. Um, Dad and I both use this every single day. It's called HRV. This is heart rate variability training. So if you're afraid that you've been overtraining, this is a big question that I get that I was asking myself is, well, how do I know if I'm overtraining, right? How on earth do I know if I'm overtraining? This is a definitive way for you to know. It's called heart rate variability training. Now, I use a Polar H7. The chest strap monitor I recommend now is actually the Polar H10 because I've been doing this for years. So there's an H10 out now. That's how old that I am to this thing, right? So you wake up in the morning, put on the Polar H7, uh, H10 now, and I use the Elite HRV app and that is free. The Elite HRV app measures the milliseconds in between your heartbeats and it tells you how stressed your body is. So you'll see a curve like this. I'm gonna do it this way because you're reading left to right. There's a curve like this. So there's sympathetic, middle point, parasympathetic. Then you get a needle and it's red to green or red on both sides and greens in the middle, right? So you may have too much sympathetic nervous system. You might have too much parasympathetic nervous system. Now parasympathetic is your rest and digest, your calm, you, that, that's what you want when you're going to sleep. Your sympathetic is like when you first get out of bed, you get a cortisol spike, that's kind of your fight or flight, right? So this measures where you're at based on feedback from your body. And it will give you a number. Let's say it's a number three and it's bright red. You don't train that day, period. Doesn't matter. Your body doesn't care what day of the week it is. This is something I wanna drive into people's heads. The human brain has constructed a calendar. It has constructed days. Your internal organs and muscles and tissues don't give a shit about your calendar. They don't care at all. They don't care that Monday, Monday's chest day, bro. Monday's chest day. Doesn't matter how I feel. I fight through it. Fight through it. If you wake up and you have an HRV of two and it's bright red, guess what, dude? You better move chest day to Tuesday because your risk of injury is through the roof right now. Literally through the roof. Now, if you get a perfect 10 HRV and you want to go run sprints and do a CrossFit wad, cool, congratulations. Go do it, but save it for that day. That's why I, I never say Monday's this day, Wednesday's this day, and Friday's this day. It doesn't work like that for me. Everything runs off my HRV. And once I want to say about a new um, tool that's coming out, I guess we'll call it. It's a piece of wearable tech called the Aura Ring. The Aura Ring is amazing. I tested the Aura Ring over a year ago, but it was giant and bulky, and I couldn't really wear it playing, playing piano. It was kind of ugly. They're coming out with a new Aura Ring, I believe in April, that looks like a men's wedding band. It's about that thin, but you can get it in white, pink, whatever you want for girls, and it measures your HRV consistently all throughout the day. It measures your sleep, your deep sleep, your light sleep, your REM sleep. It's the best tracker I've ever seen. I repeat that. The Aura Ring is the best fitness and sleep tracker I've ever seen in my life. I pre-ordered. I got friends to pre-order. When that little one that looks like a wedding band comes out, I cannot wait for that thing. The Aura Ring is amazing. You can check your HRV every day and it gives you a percentage score of zero all the way to 100. So if you're at an 87, think of that as like an eight, right? Okay, go train that day. Go have fun. Hit, it, hit a hard workout. But that's the other thing with this the mindset of all this is like you wake up, you know, your kid was up screaming until two in the morning and you have a Pilates workout scheduled at 6.30 and you wake up and you feel like you're gonna die, stay in bed. Screw the Pilates class, whatever. Listen to your body. Because I, I assure you, if you were measuring your HRV with something like the Aura Ring, the Aura Ring would tell you that your sleep sucked, you're not well rested, and your HRV is terrible. Don't work out that day. We don't need to guess anymore, everybody. It's 2018. We don't need to guess. I track everything. I quantify as much as I possibly can. I hook electrodes up to my brain so that my meditation is more powerful, literally. So you're, you're getting feedback. You can get neurofeedback, you can get biological feedback. There's all these different tools you can use to know exactly how your body's feeling that day. All right, so that's my spiel on what everybody is getting wrong with fitness. Uh, let's talk about why. So how much training is required for fat loss? Exactly zero. Exercise exists for two reasons. One, to improve a specific skill, 
and two, to build muscle. Notice that fat loss isn't anything on that, isn't anywhere on that list. Now the only thing that you could really argue for is like the 180 rule, the aerobic training threshold teaches your body how to burn fat, that's pretty great, or something incredibly violent like weekly sprints, like weekly 100 meter sprints, those will help you burn fat, but they're freaking brutal and I don't recommend them for everyone and I recommend at least 15 minutes of warm up before you do your first sprint because the risk of injury is off the charts, so I really don't recommend it to people. But literally, exercise exists to improve specific skills and to build muscle. Now this is the glycolytic versus the aerobic, the aerobic versus anaerobic, all that. So people are shocked when they come to me for fat loss, so let's jump on the fat loss train now. They're shocked when they come to me and they tell me all about their workouts. I'm doing this, 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 and I go, not anymore. You don't get to do that anymore. For the next 30 days, I want you to take a 20 minute walk every day. And what's funny is people freak out at first and then they come back and they're honest with me and they're like, I can't tell you how happy I am that you said that. I thought that you were gonna tell me I need to work out six times a week and I need to do this and I need to do that. The only thing that I allow them to do, and I ask them, stick to my protocol. If you want results, do what I tell you. And I say, walk. Walk every day if you want to. You can walk every day, it's not a problem. There's, there's no risk of overtraining. Even with the 180 rule, there's really no risk of overtraining. So I actually take exercise away from people and what happened in the Clovis Academy, I told you about the girl that dropped 12 pounds in her first week. A guy texted me the other day, his mom dropped 12 pounds in her first week. I got ladies that drop 30 pounds in their first 30 days. I have dudes that are down 40 pounds in there. I have a girl who lost 90 pounds in a matter of months, all without fitness. So flip the fitness first script on its head. Let's take this nutrition first. Now, I'm not saying you can't do these things. Like, again, I'm just saying that you're not ready yet. Now, we'll get you to a point where you're ready. That's the whole point. I'm gonna start from the ground up and we rebuild your health. We're trying to undo decades of damage. Decades. If you end up obese and you can barely move, that's decades of damage that we have to undo. And I wanna help you undo it more than you know. I will do everything in my power to help you undo it. And then, further down the line, I don't know what that time marker is, I'm not, not even gonna say one. Maybe it's a year, maybe it's two years, whatever. And you say, hey, I think I'm gonna try CrossFit. And I go, hell yeah, let's do this. You wanna learn CrossFit? Let's do it together. Awesome, I'm so pumped you wanna do this. That's another step in your journey. But your journey stops, starts here. You don't go from sedentary and obese to six CrossFit workouts a week in an instant. You don't do that unless you want injury, pain, and failure. Don't do it. Nutrition first. All right, let's get into my favorite programs. I'm gonna do a time check, got 15 minutes, okay. My favorite programs. Um, I'm certain I'm gonna leave things out. Uh, you're gonna say, what about swimming? What about bar class? What about this? What about that? Um, I, I know, I'm gonna miss some, right? I'm cramming for time here. But these are my favorite protocols. I use them over and over in people. I've used them in men. I've used them in women to get fantastic results. I've used them in dad. Yes. Come here, dude. <laughs> Overall fitness, resistance training. This is my dad. My dad is 59 years young, right? I can't take him anywhere without people commenting on his biceps, and it's a little ridiculous. <laughs> and some of you in the Clovis Academy have asked me if my dad's single, so it's rude to stop talking to me like that. <laughs> but he's 59 years old, and I started him, we did about a year on my favorite overall resistance training pro protocol, which is Strongless 5x5. This is three days of resistance training every week and it monitors everything on an app. You can track your weights and everything. Right on your phone. Right on your awesome. phone, awesome. that's it. So how did you get in such good shape? Just, I did what he said. That's it. Simple. Honest to God, I just did what he said. And we're lucky that we built an entire powerlifting slash CrossFit slash Jiu Jitsu gym in my house and we get to train together, which yeah. is awesome. But well, that just makes it more convenient rather than having to drive somewhere. Exactly. Yeah, it's just a little more convenient. He still has to drive, it's in my house, so he has to drive to me. Yeah. But in, you know, in just over a year, you did, he was deadlifting over 300 pounds. Yeah. What do you weigh? 165. 165, deadlifting over 300 pounds. It's ridiculous. Three days a week, and resting in between. Literally, nothing in between. He goes for walks. That's it. That's it. Nutrition, fitness. So that's dad, I wanna to talk to you about dad. Nice to meet you. <laughs> but uh, so that's Strongness 5x5. Strongness 5x5 has an app on Google uh, and iPhone that you can track all your workouts. It's awesome. Um, the other one, now this one's a little tricky because it has the biggest learning curve. 
but I still have to recommend it because I've never found anything better for overall fitness, mobility, strength. That's kettlebells. Um, so the book I would start with is Simple and Sinister by Pavel Sutsalin. Uh, I'll put it in the show notes. Kettlebells literally are a one piece of equipment gym that you can have in your house that you can use anytime. Now, the only thing that I'll disagree with in terms of fat loss for these people, it, for, for all of you really, is he does recommend six days a week. I don't do three days a week, that's it. This is literally a, in the beginning the workout will take you about 40 minutes because you don't know what you're doing and then eventually you're gonna get it down to 15 minutes and you do it twice a week, three times a week, perfectly fine for overall fit. You can literally do it twice a week and you're gonna, you're gonna lose fat and you're gonna find your overall health and wellness are going through the roof, assuming the nutrition is correct. Remember, we start nutrition first and the fitness is just added. This is additional bonus, right? Strongest five by five. Uh, also can be done with machines. If you don't like the idea of free, week, free weights, you can go to a place like Planet Fitness, you can do Smith machine squats. It's just five movements. It's squat, bench press, overhead press, bent over row, and deadlifts. You can do all this on machines if you really want to, or you can use dumbbells if you're not comfortable. A lot of women have told me that they're not comfortable with resistance training. I know that's tough. Um, I've actually sent some people videos. I make instructional videos in my garage and I can show you. I sent one girl a video on how to deadlift. So if you guys wanna see that deadlift video, let me know. I'll share that with you. Just did it right in my garage real quick. Um, but you can use machines if you're worried about it. Strongest five by five, kettlebells, amazing. Another one, this, I also learned about this from Primal Endurance, that book by Mark Sisson again. This is called MSP training. It's maximum sustained power training. I think I also have a video of me doing this, but it's a time lapse and fast forward. Um, this is literally a full body workout inside of 15 minutes. So I tend to do it with squats and deadlifts. So you'll take whatever your one rep max is, you might not know what that is, so just start low. Like I take about 70% of my one rep max, so let's say I'm, I'm squatting 210 pounds or something like that for MSP, right? I'll take 70% of whatever my max is, which is like 310 on a squat. So rack the weight, I'll put the weight on my back, I'll do five reps, put it on the bar. I'll rest 20 seconds. Pick it back up, three reps, put it on the bar, rest 20 seconds. Pick it up, two reps, rest, two reps, rest, two reps, rest, one rep, boom. I'm done with squats. Maybe it takes, I don't know, two to three minutes. And then I move on and I'll do the same thing with deadlifts, right? That five, three, two, 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 one, with about 20 seconds in between at about 70% of my max. So my max deadlifts 420, whatever I find my my deadlift 70% is, let's say, 60 to 70%, and I just bang that out. Now this is maximum sustained power output, and it's the idea that you're actually lifting more weight total than if you were to do, say, three sets of 10 reps with a bunch of rest in between. So it's maximum sustained power. This is effective efficiency training. You're in and out, in and out, in and out, right? You do this two times a week, and you're pretty much done. And then do maybe some 180 rule cardio in between. Now, again, I can build you a protocol for these things if you want, but remember, it's gonna be my opinion on whether or not I think you're ready for this. So if you're five foot two and you weigh 265 pounds, we're not going there yet, but we will get you there, I promise this. So for overall fitness, resistance training is where it's at, and let me tell you why. Especially as you age, the only type of exercise you can do that is proven to increase bone density is resistance training. Running and cardio, all these other things, have an opposite effect. They can actually damage the density of your bones as you age because your bones tend to get more brittle. So reversing osteoporosis, things like that, it's always gonna start with resistance training. So kettlebells, strong lift, MSP training, those are some of my overall protocols. And remember, they all meet you where you are. If you need a lighter kettlebell, use a lighter kettlebell. If you need lighter weights, use lighter weights. If you need a machine, use a machine. If you want less sets on your MSP training, use less sets. Start where you are. This is all a journey, right? The rest is just progress. For convenience and efficiency, ARX training. I've never seen anything that beats it. It's once a week. I have a video of it on Facebook. I'm gonna share it on the Facebook page. Um, literally once per week because you exhaust your entire body and all your muscle fibers to absolute failure. Uh, which is great for the combination of strength and hypertrophy, which are two different things. Strength being strength, hypertrophy being muscle growth, getting bigger muscles. Um, and this is all spawns from something called Body by Science. Body by Science, I think, is by Dr. Doug McGruff. But Body by Science is the idea of you never let your muscles rest. You work your muscles nonstop. There's no lockout in the reps. It's just over and over and over and over and over until full exhaustion. So you're actually engaging all of your muscle fibers, slow twitch, fast twitch, and everything in between. Every single muscle fiber you have is getting exhausted. But the problem with that is you literally need a week to recover. If you do the big five workout for ARX or Body by Science, you need a week to recover. I don't care if you feel good after. 
you need a week to recover, trust me. That's actually what we're using for the mass gains protocol and I'm splitting the body and doing two workouts per week. Uh, Josh and I are doing that. We have it all documented. I'll share the Facebook video of me doing ARX. I'll share a link for Body by Science and we'll, we can explain to you exactly how those things work. If you wanna go deeper on any of this stuff, email me, justin at clovisculture.com. We can talk about hypertrophy and how to eat for that. That's also in the Q&A coming up. Um, overall favorite movement practice, yoga. For all you yogis out there, I love it. It's great. It's awesome. You can't really overtrain it unless you're doing, you know, 90 minutes of hot yoga six days a week or something. I mean, I'm sure you could overdo it if you really tried, but like even just 30 minutes a day of a yoga practice would be great. And I'm not worried about you overdoing it. And that's something that I actually do recommend to clients who are not healthy enough for intense physical activity. We'll do a really, really simplified version of yoga, maybe 30 minutes, something like that. Start them there to get some mobility work going. And that's just really, really good for overall health. So yoga, I love it. If you wanna try heated yoga, do heated yoga maybe once a week and see, see how you like that because it's really, really intense. So um, let's see how much time I got. I got about 10 minutes. Uh, I promised something for the athletes. So real, real quick for the athletes. Stop combining sports-specific training with fitness training. They're two different things, right? This is, an, this is the issue that I have with CrossFit is like most people are not competing and every single training session is as if they are competing. They're training like they're going to compete. They're just killing themselves, killing themselves, killing themselves. And what you need to do is build an aerobic base. Use that 180 rule to build an aerobic base because generally speaking, and I know there are outliers, but CrossFitters don't love aerobic exercise. If there's a one mile run in their wad, they're really upset about it, right? Um, so every athlete should build an aerobic base outside of your sport. Primal Endurance by Mark Sisson, look this up, build an aerobic base. If you wanna learn how to build an aerobic base and you don't wanna read the book, just email me, justin at clovisculture.com. We'll do this during your off season when you're not competing. Um, I've done this with MMA fighters. MMA is also a great example of training smarter, not harder. Uh, most, not most, but a large number of MMA fighters don't even do full contact sparring anymore. It's the same thing as CrossFit. But why are you, why are you training like you're gonna compete and risking injury and all these things before the competition? Put your best foot forward in the competition, right? You don't need to be getting punched in the face as an MMA fighter every day to be a good MMA fighter. You just don't need to. All right, Q&A. Let's see. We got some comments coming in on Facebook. How's Instagram look up there? Just make sure that's still running. I hope so. <laughs> All good? All right. So uh, a couple Q&As that I had from people that already came in today. I'm going to try to bang through these pretty quickly. Um, hangover. Should you work out when you're hungover? I was notorious for this. Remember, I was the front man for a band called the Cougar Petting Zoo, and we played nothing but college bars and drank Jägermeister and Miller Lite all day, every day, to the summer o'clock in the morning, right? So I'd wake up hungover as shit every day, and I would work out and try to pummel my way through it. I wouldn't do that now. I'm very, very, very rarely, maybe once a year hungover these days, so I don't really deal with that. Um, rest. Hydrate and electrolytes. The salt trick. Over and over and over, the salt trick as much as you need it. Plenty of water, plenty of electrolytes. Don't forget the electrolytes doesn't work one without the other, right? Hydrate and electrolytes. Don't go train. If you're really, really hungover, rest. Stay in bed, electrolytes, water. Do it. Time of day to work out. This idea that if you work out in the morning, you'll burn more calories throughout the day. Who cares? We already talked about calories in, calories out. Now, let's talk about hormones, which run the show. There is actually very little evidence that working out in the morning has a beneficial hormonal response. It can be quite the opposite. So rather than getting into the science of this, there's a book called The Power of When, and The Power of When discusses different chronotypes. It's like bear, wolf, dolphin, all these different things. Like some people do really well at night with graveyard shift. Some people do well waking up really early in the morning. Like I think those are the lions that wake up really, really early. Everybody has a different chronotype. You can take a quiz to figure out the power of when. I think it's thepowerofwhen.com. Take a quiz, figure out your chronotype. Generally speaking, the best time to work out for hormonal responses is afternoon. Just kind of the way it is, like between, I think it's between like 1 and 4 p.m. Um, but if your schedule doesn't allow for it, just work out when you can work out. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about the details. Just get started. Um, timing of meals was another question we had. Um, this is all about goals, right? So let's say you're looking for longevity. If you do an intense resistance training session, you're actually better off not eating for like two hours. This is the same way where some people will finish a workout and jump in an ice bath. You just completely blunted the hormetic response of that workout and the inflammation response. That's what you're doing is you're putting a stressor on your body and you're making the body recover. The recovery process is where you see results. Like you don't build muscle while you're working out, you build muscle while you sleep, right? So anything that you do to get in the way of the body's natural response to that stressor 
is not necessarily a good thing unless you have a specific goal in mind. Like for me, I'm doing mass gains right now. If you're looking for hypertrophy, you wanna get your muscles as big as possible, do a crazy resistance training session where you exhaust all muscle fibers, body by science, ARX, that type of workout, and then you have a 90 minute window called the window of gains. I had an article published about this and it was in Fitness RX for Men. I'll put a link to that too. That window of gains, about a 90 minute window where you want to eat until you are ridiculously uncomfortable and you want it to be all protein and throw some carbs in there as well if you're trying to build muscle, right? So we can talk about how many carbs, don't get all excited that I just said that, right? But that is what you wanna do for hypertrophy. Now, that's the thing is these performance goals don't always line up with longevity and health goals, right? They really don't actually, they, 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 they tend to go like this. Longevity and human performance, they go like this. If you wanna be like a world record athlete, world record holding athlete, you're gonna have some issues when you get older. It's just the way it is, it's a trade off, right? Because there's so much inflammation, there's so much chemical responses happening within the body for that level of output. So it depends on your goals. Um, if, let's say you wanna lose weight, do aerobic training, the 180 rule, 180 minus your, your age, do it in the morning and do it completely fasted. Maybe drink a glass of water and go out and do 30 minutes aerobic training with that heart rate completely fasted. That's best for fat loss. And then try to hold off as long as you can to eat after that. Once you get really hungry, just go ahead and eat. If you want muscle growth, slam, slam, slam protein with a little bit of carbs immediately post-workout. If you're looking for health, overall longevity, wait about two hours in that post-workout window after your workout to go get food. Don't stunt that response, the natural response in your body. Um, this question was no pain, no gain. Is no pain, no gain true? Um, kind of. It's not all bullshit, but it's a lot of bullshit because it's not used as like ARX is incredibly painful, but I do it once a week, right? And then I let my body recover and I do gain from it. So yes, there's a lot of pain there. It's brutal. And then I get gain and benefit out of it. The thing is, if I were to do that day after day after day after day and justify it by saying no pain, no gain, no pain, no gain, no pain, no gain, I'm going to really, really hurt myself and have really bad long-term effects. So no pain, no gain, kind of true, but the way it's used in society is very detrimental to your goals. Um, another question, glycogen replenishment. Okay, uh, what is glycogen replenishment? Uh, <laughs> glycogen replenishment is, so if you're taking glucose, glucose is sugar, all carbohydrates equal glucose because they all eventually get converted to glucose into the body. So glucose is sugar. When your body stores that sugar, it either stores it as two things. One, glycogen, the storage form of glucose, or it converts it into triglycerides and stores it as fat. I know this is a crazy biochemistry lesson, right? But glycogen replenishment is replenishing the three to 400 grams, depending on the size of your body, of muscle glycogen that you have stored glucose. Remember I told you there are activities that are glycolytic. Now, throughout all of human history, what's glycolytic? Oh shit, that lion's trying to eat me. I better sprint. That's the only time that glycolytic things happen. These people weren't working out for fun to stay in shape, right? So the body keeps these things, these glycogen stores, so it can save them for emergency fight or flight situations. So the idea was something like ARX, I'm depleting all of my muscle glycogen because I'm exhausting all of my muscle fibers simultaneously. Then that 90 minute window, I can shove carbs in my face if I want to, and it's just gonna replenish muscle glycogen. It's not gonna get stored as fat. That's the idea of glycogen replenishment. Here's where you go wrong. You're not depleting muscle glycogen. I'm telling you right now, I've worked with a lot of you, I've worked with a lot of people, your workouts aren't that hard. I hate to tell you, really. It's like people think that their workouts are hard. I'm like, okay, your beach body workout was kind of hard. And then I show them ARX and they're like, if you ever make me do that again, like just hit me with a car instead because that's horrible, right? That's muscle, that's depleting muscle glycogen. So you have to justify muscle glycogen replenishment by depleting it. And most workouts don't deplete it. Um, so that's why I don't really tell people to do it. Maxing out, should you max out? Nope. If you're not competing, don't max out. What reason do you have? It's literally just for ego. Let me tell you a story. When I, when I maxed out my deadlift, I pulled a 425 pound deadlift, which was a 70 pound PR for me, right? So I deadlifted 70 pounds less than that, and one day I was just feeling froggy. Strapped a belt on, pulled a 425 pounds deadlift. I got it on video. I'll share the video with you guys if you want to see it. So I pulled a 425 pound deadlift, and at the time, I was sick in the head. I was a savage, and my brain, I dropped that weight down, done, just succeeded something I never thought that I would accomplish. And my brain said, 500, I'm gonna deadlift 500. Why? I weigh 167 pounds right now. Why do I need, and I have no plans on competing, ever. Why would I risk injury? Why do I need to deadlift 500 pounds? 
What do I have to prove? In case a small car happens to fall on a loved one and I have to remove it before they die? It's ridiculous. I don't need to do that. And I look back at myself three years ago, just like, damn dude, I wanted to pull 500 pounds. I really cared about that. And I ended up in a bad way. I have an article about this, my blood work. I almost damn near killed myself with CrossFit. So um, we can talk about that if you want to. It sucked, it sucked really bad. And it's because of the headspace I was in because I'm a meathead sometimes, right? Um, so what you want to do is if you want to test your, test your one rep max, you can do a simple calculation. Your five rep max times 20% is generally around your one rep max, right? So it's the Pavel Sutzelin idea, the kettlebell guy I told you about, is if you want to see what your one rep max is or, or you want to prove you're getting stronger, continually test your 70%. What's your 70%? So if I have my 100% here and my 70% here and my 70% keeps getting heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier. Is it gonna go like this, then all of a sudden my 70% is my 100%? It doesn't work like that. It's gonna move like this. As my 70%, my one rep max, my 100% gets higher and higher and higher and higher. I know it's getting higher. That doesn't mean I need to test it. Why do I need to test it? That's just 100% ego. Don't do that to yourself. Don't put yourself in that mindset because it leads nowhere good, I promise you, unless you're trying to compete in a powerlifting event or something. Um, okay, best exercises for... Best exercises for booty, best exercises for abs. Let's try to hammer through this. I'm still good on Instagram, right? Instagram tries to cut me off sometimes. Um, oh, live video ended, yeah? It did? Uh-oh. Can we start a new one? I think you might have another one second. Have to save it first. Oh, yeah. Hold on one second. We're coming back. Do, 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 do. That was Mario music. Boom. <laughs> We're live again. Sorry about that. I talk too much for Instagram. But um, okay, so best exercises for uh, booty, best exercises for abs. Best exercise for ab is the myotatic crunch that's done with a BOSU ball. Um, I can show you a video of that because Josh and I have videos of it. There's really no way for me to explain these things to you, but it engages all of your muscle fibers called the myotatic, M-Y-O-T-A-T-I-C, myotatic crunch. It's done on a BOSU ball. Look that up. It's amazing. Um, for another one for abs, is the kettlebell swing, the two-handed kettlebell swing. There's a steep learning curve. I have a great instructional video on kettlebells, so if you want that, I'll send it to you, justin at clovisculture.com. Um, kettlebell swings and uh, myotatic crunch, fantastic for abs. Now, for butt, same thing. Kettlebell swings are fantastic for your butt because your butt and your abs are engaged completely at the top of the swing. Um, so two-handed kettlebell swing, and um, I would probably say weighted hip raises. Um, I can show you guys how to do those. And then there's something called catbird, where you're just basically doing backwards leg raises for your butt. So I have an entire protocol called uh, build a better butt. <laughs> uh, so if you want that, just let me know and I'll send it to you. But most girls don't like it because they go, I want a better butt. And I go, okay, you're gonna exercise twice a week and you're gonna eat probably two to three times more food than you're used to eating. And they tell me I'm crazy and never even try it. But the girls that do try it send some pretty killer before and after pictures. So if you want to try the Build a Better Butt Protocol, hit me up and I'll teach you how to do it. Um, this is another one, uh, a quick myth that we touched on is spot reduction. Um, spot reduction for fat, like I have fat in my thighs or I have fat in my love handles, whatever. Spot reduction is a myth. Unless you want to go do cold sculpting or some insane stuff at some hair salon, right? Don't do that nonsense or put a gel on. It's ridiculous. You need to lower overall body fat. You need to change your body composition. Your, your, your ratio of muscle to fat, right? Your body composition, that's what I changed. That's what I am masterful at. That's what I'm doing for all the people in the Clovis Academy and all these crazy testimonies that we have. So don't go for spot reduction. We need to, over, we need to lower overall body fat to, to get, take care of those trouble spots. They'll eventually go away, right? Um, heart rate zones, we already touched on that. Let's see if we got anything else good on Facebook. I wish I could see, there may have been some Instagram comments, but now I'm not gonna be able to see them because we lost the live video. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we're over an hour now. That was live, ask me anything. Number 11, fitness and fat loss, or not, you know better now. All of these things we can touch on more. Like I said, I, I try like hell to cram these things. Like I ran out of time on Instagram. I've done that twice now, right? So I try to cram these things in as much time as I can, but I can't give you a crash course on this stuff in one hour. If you wanna go deeper on anything that I talked about, give me a shout, justin at clovisculture.com, facebook.com slash the Clovis Culture. Join the academy, facebook.com slash groups slash Clovis Academy. Join the academy, tons of free, amazing information there. Check that out. 
Uh, Instagram is at the Clovis Culture. I'm at Justin Nault, J U S T I N N A U L T. Look me up there. All the show notes and resources will get put up as a blog post. So you'll have access to all those if I mention any cool tricks. The Aura Ring, I'll probably reach out to Aura Ring, see if I can do something for you guys to get you hooked up with that because it's incredible. I've never been more excited about a piece of technology in my life than this new Aura Ring. I'm totally nerding out about this thing. I'm super excited. So let's end this with this. Please be kind to your bodies. Be kind to your bodies. Be kind to your bodies. I could literally sit here and say that to you 10 times because I know what's gonna happen. What's gonna happen is the same thing that happens when I tell everyone to stop stepping on the scale. They tell me that they get it. I get it, Justin, I get it, I get it, I get it. I'll weigh myself 30 days from now. And then they weigh themselves the next day. I've only lost another pound. I somehow thought I was gonna lose another 15 pounds in the 12 hours since I weighed myself last. It's a quick way to frustration. Be kind to your bodies, listen to your bodies. And if you, don't, if you don't know how to listen to your body quite yet, pick up a Polar H10, test your heart rate variability, pick up an Aura Ring, test your heart rate variability, listen to your body that way. Let your body tell you. Be kind to your body because here's, you're gonna wake up tomorrow and you're gonna see an Instagram athlete who's kicking ass in the gym at 4.30 in the morning and you're gonna feel guilty because it takes time to undo this brainwashing. It takes time to unwrap these wires that have just gone astray in your brain. It's like wired to eat, right? We're genetically wired to move less and eat more. So stop going against your genetic programming and find something that's sustainable. That's lifestyle design. We're gonna find a lifestyle design that works for you. Stop feeling guilty because working out all the time doesn't make you happy. Does that make you less of a person? No, not at all. It's crazy. Who cares if you don't like working out? Right now, I'm pulling 15 to 18 hour days and I'm traveling all the time. The only human being that I know that works more than I do is Josh. And you guys know Josh now in the Clovis Academy. He's the freaking wizard. The kid never stops. He's the energizer bunny. It blows my mind, right? I'm working 15 to 18 hour days. So what do I do? ARX twice a week or ARX once a week. Do I look like I'm in horrible shape because I'm only working out once a week? No, my nutrition is perfect. You do what you can for your lifestyle. Stop feeling bad because you're not somebody else. Screw somebody else, let them do their thing. Just be you. If working out doesn't make you happy, let's get you healthy without it, because you don't need it. I promise you, I can take care of you here. So shoot me an email, justin at clovisculture.com. If you're in the queue, if you're in my inbox and you sent me a message already, I promise I'm gonna get to you. I'm trying my very best. It's been busy, 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 busy. Really long hours. I still gotta prep for things like this. Been a lot of travel lately, but I promise I'm gonna get to it. I love you guys so much. This is Ask Me Anything Live number 11, fitness for fat loss or not. Thank you guys so much for hanging out the whole time. I know this was long. We went an hour and eight minutes. You are awesome. Ask me more questions. Hit me up on all the socials. Click the like button. Click the love button. Share with your friends and family. Tag your friends who need to hear this. Join the Clovis Academy. Also, one more thing. One trick for you. One little tip just because I want to take care of you. I invented the perfect paleo powder. I don't know if you know that, but we sell it. And I've created a coupon code just for you, just for tonight, so I can try to drill this in your head. The coupon code is REST DAY. R-E-S-T-D-A-Y. REST DAY. That's good for the whole store, and it's gonna get you 20% off. So get on there, clovis.store. I highly recommend digest and rest, or fat loss, if you are wanting to lose fat, or if you are one of my athletes listening out there, the pre-workout and the post-workout, 20% off the entire store. Use promo code RESTDAY. I haven't decided how long I'm gonna leave that up for, so you should probably go and do it. Uh, promo code RESTDAY, R-E-S-T-D-A-Y. Pump it in, clovis.store. Go check it out. Thank you guys so much. Please share this. I love you. We do this every week. We're gonna do it again next week. Live, ask me anything. Number 11, fitness for fat loss or not. Thank you, Dad.